I'm Tim Laird with Kevin Harnett in the secrets of Bluegrass Chef's Kitchen Studio. It's a Kentucky Proud show coming your way with a twist of Tuscany. Chef Gina Stipo is here from At the Italian Table, which is one of the most unique restaurants in all of the state. We'll show you what makes it so special and get a lot of good secrets to making your own Italian food at home. Plus, Kevin, I'll tell you what, I'm gonna share the secrets to the Kentucky Bourbon Pie. Ooh, that sounds delicious. That's up my alley. That's like dessert and a cocktail all in a glass. It is, it's a cocktail, not a pie, but mm. I'll tell you what, it's unbelievable. A whole lot of secrets about to be revealed, a whole lot of fun about to be had before a live studio audience. It's now on Secrets of Bluegrass Chef. And welcome to Secrets of Bluegrass Chefs. I'm Kevin Harnett, and we are at our home base right here in Butchertown at Bourbon Barrel Foods. But it feels like we're taking the show to Italy. We're excited to have Chef Gina Stipo with us, who actually spent some of her childhood in Verona, Italy. She also lived there later in life teaching cooking classes. Nowadays, she calls Louisville home, running a small restaurant on Frankfurt Avenue with just two tables and 20 seats. She makes all the food from scratch, just like they do it in Italy. Today, she's sharing the secrets to some of her favorite dishes with us, homemade pasta with artichokes and Tuscan beef with rosemary sage. <laughs> Yum, doesn't that sound good? All of that's coming up within the next half hour. Say hello to my co-host, my broadcast partner, my good friend, America's CEO, our chief entertaining officer, Tim Laird. Hello, Kevin. Hello, Timmy. Wow, great audience. Oh, wow. They are they, having fun. They are having lots of fun. They're going to have a chance to taste this amazing meal we're about to prepare. You have been to At the Italian Table. It is such a wonderful place. I'll tell you what, it is like traveling from here to Italy in one place. All authentic food, and you can see it being prepared, and it's an intimate environment. It's wonderful. Well, I say we share the secrets. Let's do. All right. Thank you, Kevin. All right. It's a great day to be in Kitchen Studio because we have, from the Italian Table, please welcome Chef Gina Stipo! Yes. Gina! Good to see you. Good to see you. Good to Welcome. See you. Good to see you. Thank you. Oh, we're so excited. I mean, I, I, the Italian table is truly, truly takes us to Italy. How would you describe it? Well, I would describe it as um, an authentic experience of the conviviality and the communal um, uh, dining that you find in Italy. Um, you guys have been, to, you've traveled there and uh, some people, you know, grew up in an Italian family where family life centered around, you know, the meal and so you're discussing everything at the table and really that's that's what goes on there. I've what thought, a concept, huh? Yeah, and, and, right? We're missing that now. And, you know, I have to say that when I opened the place, I thought, well, people that had been to Italy wanted to recreate the experience or maybe uh, people that grew up in an Italian family, you know, felt really at home. What I found is people that maybe couldn't even find Italy on a map just really love the whole thing and come back time and again just, you know, meeting new people or sharing it with friends, relaxing over a glass of wine and just waiting for the food to come out. It's just, they really oh, love it. it so. it's, a, it's a wonderful place and it is a communal place where you can meet other people and yeah. talk to other people and, and share great food and wine. I mean, that's that's what it's all about. The heart of Italy is that same thing. And very easy ingredients, simple ingredients, right. just like they do in Italy. And right. it's just wonderful Th and all fresh. Right. And so, Let's get We're going to start with, uh, look at this, a little mm. beef over here. This is a round. It's a top round, okay. which is not one of the more expensive cuts of meat. And that's very indicative of, uh, of Tuscan cooking specifically, uh, especially because these people um, were not wealthy people. They were uh, a very agricultural-based economy, and um, they were very economical, and they used everything. So this is a cut of beef that is an, an economical cut of beef, and I'm going to show you how you can really make the most delicious dish with Excellent. it. Excellent. Now, um, this particular, they call it, in Tuscany, it's called Ros beef, and that is spelled R-O-S-B-I-F. And it is a phonetical pronunciation of roast beef. Eng it. The English roast beef. Right. So roast beef. <laughs> Actually, it is not roasted in the oven because they didn't have ovens until well after World War II. These okay. people were cooking on open fireplaces or wood burning stoves. And so if they were going to roast something or bake bread, they would do it in a wood burning oven. And that wasn't conducive to 
you know, four hours of burning oh, wood in order right. to turn the oven right. on to roast a piece of meat. So what they did they, is they did it on top of the stove. So I have quite a bit of oil in um, my pan. I love my little my little oval pan. I Beautiful. find it perfect for this. Um, some of the rounds are, are a little bit bigger and so it really holds it. So you want about a, a, a good half an inch of oil in the bottom of the pan and you get that really nice and hot. The beef has already been salted. So you want to salt it. I salted this ahead of time. You, you want the beef to be room temperature and really well salted. And that's a good secret to know, too, because I think a lot of people will take it right out of yes. the refrigerator. But then it's got to warm up, and then but you, you want to bring it to room temperature, maybe even an hour, and you're okay with that? Oh, absolutely. Out? Two hours. Two hours. Absolutely. A couple of hours. The bigger the cut of meat, the longer you're going to want to, um, to bring it up to temperature. So you want it room temperature, and then you want to get your oil really nice and hot. So we're going to brown our meat. There's that sizzle. There's that mm. sizzle and uh, brown it all over and then we're going to toss in our rosemary and our sage uh, well chopped and then whole garlic cloves and then we're going to put in a good amount of white wine. Oh, very we're going to put the lid on it and allow it to just sort of poach. So then you even want to stand it up and let oh, the, the, well, the, the end piece get. Um, usually the round has a little bit of fat on one side and I usually leave that side up. Okay, oh so it can drip down and marinate? Right, right. Perfect. Right. So then we're going to lay that down. You can turn the fire down just a little bit. We're going to add our rosemary. Mm. And like I said, you let that sit in the oil for just a few minutes. It oh. brings that out. Can you smell that? Yeah, I yes. can smell and that. And then a couple of whole garlic cloves. Got three of them here. A little bit more salt. You want to salt the, um, the oil and the wine. And then we're going to pour some wine in this. Is it just regular salt? Just, I only so use whole fine. sea salt. Okay. This particular salt comes from Sicily. Quite a bit of wine. You, this is like a little poaching. Yeah, that was a nice. And I just want to jump in there with that. That know, looks right? good. Yeah. Now that we got the wine in there. Right? And that is going to, um, that's going, oh, I like to put a little bit of oil on the beef just right after, right before I, a little bit of, that's my little bit. I like that. <laughs> And then we're Treat. going to let that um, that come up to temperature so it just starts to simmer and we'll turn the fire way down to just let it sort of simmer. And then when it's done, we're going to take it out, we're going to let it rest and then we'll slice it. And thankfully, uh, while that's cooking, we already have one that is prepared, sliced and ready to go. Gina, that looks amazing. Thank you. Now again, the secret too was after it's cooked uh, that slowly, then you let it rest before slicing. Very and important. Then slice thinly. Look at that. It's, it's almost very, like shaved. It's very important to let it rest for a few minutes, and then the au jus just gets. And you see, that's the oil and the oh, white wine that was and all, all that the herbs. Oil and all those ingredients that infused the in there, the garlic and herbs, and wow, oh, that is incredible. That really is nice. Oh, and then just a little garnish. A little fresh. Fresh a little herb. garnish there. Look at that. That is unbelievable. There it oh is. My wow. And all done on the stove top. All done on the stove. And if I'm at the at the Italian table, what do I ask for? Uh, well, you just hope that I make it that night. Because <laughs> <laughs> well, well, there you have it. Yeah. But that's what's fun. I'm, ho I'm hoping. Fingers that's crossed. It always that's changes, my though. That's what's fun about the Italian table. It always changes, and it's but you can guarantee it's going to be fresh, delicious, and Italian. Well, and the menu is done seasonally. So uh, in the winter time, we're using a lot of fennels and and. Uh, cauliflowers and mushrooms and winter squashes and uh, more roasted meats. In the summertime, we do, do a lot of grilling outside. We'll have tomatoes and zucchini and eggplants and bell peppers and basil. So and you've got to get in early. And you That's can right. always talk to me about the menu. If you would like me to serve the Tuscan uh, roast beef, then uh, just say, you know, the the Tuscan beef, you, know, nice. you can do that. So you know, so, yeah. so we can bribe the chef. Kevin. Like you'll, you'll have to, that's what they do in Chicago. Let's bribe the chef. We're going to oh, bribe really? her out of a few more secrets yeah. when we come back. We're not finished. You've got some pasta we're going to move up. Absolutely. Look forward to that. And Tim, you're making a cocktail? I am. I tell you what, it's the Kentucky bourbon pie. Ooh, might be my favorite. I like the sound of that. We're coming back with more secrets with Bluegrass Chefs with Gina Stipo from At the Italian Table right after this. <laughs> wow. Welcome back to Secrets of Bluegrass Chefs. Kevin Harnett alongside my good friend, 
broadcast partner, Tim Laird. Tim, you're always at it in the Libation Lab, coming up with creative cocktails. I always like this part of the show. We are. I love this cocktail. It's called the Kentucky Bourbon Pie. You made it just for me, didn't you? I it? did. <laughs> and if you think about uh, a wonderful pie that has chocolate, oh. pecan, and maybe a little bit of bourbon in it. I think about uh, it all the time. That was the inspiration. So Kentucky Bourbon Pie oh. goes like this. And a shaker with ice. Yes. Equal parts. Woodford Reserve. I'm finding myself paying more attention than ever before to your <laughs> cocktail. And by the way, this is going to make two, so I hope. <laughs> there's two, yes. There's two parts of that. Anyway, a little bit of pecan uh, liqueur I love, this uh, rivulet. Oh, it is good, and it smells unbelievable. It's just like a like, pecan, I'm telling you. Unbelievable. And then a little chocolate liqueur goes in. About the same amount. So, again, you've got chocolate, pecan, bourbon. What a nice combination. And I'm going to uh, shake this up to chill it down a little bit. And we're actually going to pour it into a prepared uh, graham cracker rimmed glass. And right. Simply just dipped it in water and then dipped it into uh, some uh, crushed graham crackers. I like your idea. You can actually dip it in honey, then the graham crackers. Huh? That would be it might be too, a little Kevin. messier. It could, yes, it would be. <laughs> but uh, anyway, so that's kind of the pie. Wow, how is easy this is. How about that? Boom. Kevin, I saved some for you. And look, even a little more for me. I suppose you could garnish this with a little. Don't take it all. <laughs> that's right. Okay. All right, Kevin. Let's you could garnish with did. a little whipped cream. Oh, yes. Make it a nice a little, little pie if you wanted top, to. A little dollop of that. Like whatever. This. Boom. Fancy, Cheers. Let's fancy see how glass. we did. Wow. How good is that? That's <laughs> delicious. It is. I really like anyway, that. Anyway, let's you know, get back to cooking with Gina. Let's do that. Uh, what, what's next, Gina? A pasta with artichokes. Um, the key to an artichoke is you want to make get something that's really nice and green and firm. Um, in the wintertime, and if you go to Italy, you'll just see mountains and mountains of five or six different varieties, purple ones wow. and <laughs> little tiny ones and big fat green ones. And uh, here we pretty much just get this kind, but it's good. So um, I'm going to show you how we're going to, you guys ever clean artichokes? No, I'm scared. All right. It's <laughs> really easy. I like watching scary. other people do it. Yeah, Kevin just <laughs> opens up a can and gets the <laughs> artichokes. It's uh, hearts. <laughs> <laughs> terrible. You can get them frozen, but this is, well, actually, you can make this pasta with a can of artichokes. You can make it with the frozen artichokes. But, you See, know, when you have, especially, fresh. yeah, but well, fresh is, is, is just really fabulous. Is so, um, so what we're going to do is. Uh, we're going to cut and throw away all the stuff that's not edible. And there's a lot of stuff on an artichoke that's not edible, unfortunately. So we're going to cut the top off about halfway, and we're going to cut part of the stem off. The stem's edible, so oh, that's the first part. Mm -hmm. Oh, wow, okay. So we'll cut some of that off. Um, so that's the first part we're just going to throw away. And then you're going to pull off all of the leaves that are really dark green, inedible. Okay. Now, I know a lot of people um, in the U.S. will take an artichoke and get to this point and then put it in uh, water and Boiling steam water. it. Mm -hmm. yeah, or steam it. And, and right. And use then it to dip in exactly you make some nice lemon butter or vinaigrette. Mm -hmm. This basically is an inedible leaf that you're just going to use as a vehicle to get that yummy butter into your mouth. And then <laughs> it's, you lick it's, it off well, and then you throw that away. Yeah. So we're gonna throw it away at the outset. So we get down to this part and you can see that it's all nice and all yellow. Soft and all the yes it's nice and and actually you could if you wanted to just take that and eat that leaf and eat really? it raw. Eat it raw? Like. Yep. Go ahead Kevin. Um, <laughs> Well, there thank you, you. ever been through everybody's hands. For you. Then we're going to carefully peel mm. the stem, just like you would the, a peel off of an apple. This is all edible, so this is the part you don't want to throw away. You're just going to very carefully peel the outer skin off, like that. Have you ever had a raw artichoke before, Tim? No. This is actually What'd a really think? I, I love it. It's fresh. Well, we have a salad that we'll make in the spring. When you, when you get an artichoke, we'll see what, what choke, kind of a choke we have in here that's inedible. But a lot of them that we get have no choke at all. And if you find one that has no choke, you slice that really thin, toss it with lemon juice, parsley, olive wow. oil, and some um, shaved Parmigiano, and that's a salad. You eat oh. them raw. Huh. They're really good for your liver. All of this is inedible choke. And we're going to take our little sharp knife, and we're just going to cut that out. So if this flower was allowed to bloom, it would open up, and this inner part you're going to cut out is like the, you know, the, in the, the black eye of the black-eyed Susan, oh, right, or the right. little heart of the yeah. daisy. Yep. That's basically what we're cutting out. It even looks so, like a little flower. Right, exactly. Just that, those little fuzzy things. Now, if you're, if you're lucky enough to find one that doesn't have any fuzz, then all that whole thing's edible. You don't have Perfect. to cut that out. Well, first of all, I've got some uh, sigillated water. We like to dip it or soak it. So if you're going to do a lot of artichokes, you're just going to take that artichoke and put it in the lemon water yep. so that it doesn't turn black. Oh, The that's only right. problem with artichokes is that they do sort of have a tendency to 
turn your stain. thumb Dark. black and, yeah. and, and stain. And so you can um, remove that by just rubbing some of the lemon. Wow, Rub the lemon on your skin. Oh, excellent. And that Look at that. Secret's takes revealed. It, takes it right off. There it's you like go. It's like a finger bowl. You know exactly. A big old finger bowl. <laughs> and then we're just going to, <laughs> we're going to chop this. Now, this dish is super versatile. You can cut it in quarters and leave larger pieces, saute them just like we're going to do. Serve it as a side dish. Fabulous with roasted chicken. Perfect. You can also take them, just quarter them like this, and toss them in when you're roasting a chicken. And they will roast in the oven as well. We're going to start with sautéing garlic, and we're just going to bring that to temperature. What you want is for the garlic to just start to sizzle, and then we can move it around in the pan, and we're going to add our parsley. So I have chopped Italian parsley here. This is fabulous Beautiful. at the sauté stage. Oh, uh, yeah. You can add it um, at the, when you've got liquid in the pan. Um, to this dish, we're going to add some lemon and some orange juice or you can add it at the very end of the dish. Oh, For this dish, I'm going to use Italian parsley at all three stages. All right, so our garlic is starting to sizzle. We're just See going that? to pick mm, the pan up. Smells great. Move that around a little bit. And oh, then it our, does smell great. Our artichokes can go right in. And they won't take a lot of time. Uh, actually, you want to cook them until they're really nice and soft. Okay. So depending on uh, how high your pan is will depend on how, how long that's going to take. Sea salt. I only salt use whole in. sea salt. Best stuff for you. <clears throat> and then we're just going to toss that to get that coated. Let the artichokes start to heat up, and then we're going to add our um, lemon juice and orange juice, mm. okay? Okay. We're going to take a quick break. Up next, the pasta and how it's made. You're watching Secrets of Bluegrass Chefs. We'll be right back. Hi, everybody, and welcome back to Secrets of Bluegrass Chefs. Kevin Harnett alongside Tim Laird. We are welcoming our chef from At the Italian Table. Gina Stipo is with us. We have learned so many secrets from you and a little bit of history, which I love. All right. Thanks for sharing it all. The artichokes <laughs> so. cooking up nicely in the commercial break. The artichokes will, will cook through as the liquid cooks off, and then we're ready to go ahead and put our fresh pasta in the, um, in the pot of water. Now, we have fresh pasta today. It's a tagliatelle that uh, we make all our own fresh pasta at the, at the restaurant every wow. day. So this is a fresh pasta made with a double zero flour from Italy and um, whole eggs. Nice. Well, I hear the uh, roaring boil of the water, so I suppose now it's time to uh, sink in a little pasta. Absolutely. Once the, bo the water's boiling, you want to make sure that the water is salted. Very, okay. very important. doesn't matter how flavorful your, pas your sauce is. If you're cooking the pasta in unsalted water, the whole dish tastes lifeless. Gotcha. So here's our Pasta, wow, we're going to put that right in. And I, you know, a lot of people have trouble cooking pasta, whether it's sticking or whether, really? I mean, there. Well, two things. You don't put oil in the water because that doesn't help. The first thing you have to do, you put the pasta in and you got to stir it. So you coat all those individual pieces of pasta with the hot water, and then you're going to put the lid back on, bring it back to temperature, and let it cook. Now, this is fresh pasta, it's only going to take a couple of minutes. Okay. Then we're going to take it out immediately and put it right into our sauce okay. and pour extra virgin olive oil on top of that. There's no rinsing it in a cold water. Oh, no, no. Yes. That's See, a very Midwestern U.S. thing to do. Right. Is rinse I, they it. just run that all the time, it seems like. I told I an Italian that. friend once that sometimes Americans do that, and I thought she's going to have a heart attack. <laughs> You've never heard of such a hor horrible thing. Yeah, like, like it's you okay. just wash the, the everything off the pasta. The, right, exactly, <laughs> exactly. And you cool the pasta off, too, in that, in that way. And you don't want to do that. You want to just go ahead and take it right from the pot right into the sauce. Yeah, and boy, that's reduced down nicely. That looks delicious. Oh, and it smells good. Can you yeah, oh, that? can I ever? Between all of the herbs, that's just awesome. Good, and then more olive oil is going to go on that. So the key is you need a lot of olive oil, I see. From the beginning to the end today, we've used a couple bottles, it seems like. Well, you... <laughs> You need just the right amount of olive oil. <laughs> yeah. And um, it can seem like it's quite a bit. It's probably more than other people use, but it's one of the most important flavor profiles. I find that I don't use a lot of black pepper in my cooking because Tuscan olive oil is uh, very peppery. A little peppery. And, um, and it's supposed to be. Let me ask so. about that because I've seen olive oil, it can get a little pricey. Do you have to get the high quality, high price olive oil? No, or you don't. You need to make sure that you're getting an olive oil that is a DOP or an IGP product and that just means that there are controls in Italy um, for a lot of their food products. And they, they, uh, we have one product in America that we have laid down laws for what the ingredients are, how it's to be made in a geographic region, which is the United States. What's that one product? 
bourbon. Mm -hmm. It's the only product we have in all of America that has rolls. Italy has hundreds and hundreds, not just Italy, but also France and Spain. Um, and they've done this as a, as a way to protect their products from the European Union standardization. So they have all of these um, products that have rules. Tuscan extra virgin olive oil, there's only five olives that we use. There's a zone of production. The olives have to be grown there, pressed there, and bottled there. And if you find that, it will have a seal on it, like the seal on okay. the neck of this bottle, Toscano, that you can actually go to their website and put the, that serial number of this bottle of olive oil, and it will tell you who grew the olives, oh. where it was pressed, and who bottled it. Wow. Like, yeah, well, good yeah. to know. Okay, so now we're going to take the pasta out, and I love to use the strainer. You don't have to give yourself a sauna by taking it across <laughs> the, the room. Oops. I Looks great. We get all the pasta out, and then we're going to put some extra, that beautiful extra virgin olive oil on that. And it's a it's a quick sauce to make. While uh, you're bringing the water to boil, you can uh, clean and cut and clean a couple of artichokes right. and um, saute them. And while they're sauteing, you put your pasta in. And there you have a great simple. family meal. Yeah, and you don't have to use fresh pasta. You can use a uh, boxed, um, any box pasta is fabulous with this as well. And then we're just going to toss it. Mm. Doesn't that look good? There we go. Delicious. That is our dish. And there it is, right there. Can't wait to taste it. And I'm sure you all are ready for that too, aren't you? How about a round of applause there? That is delicious. Thank you so much Thank for being for here. Me. We appreciate it. We have learned so much, not only about the authentic way, but a little history along the way. For folks that are looking for your location, you want to tell them when and where and all the good Right, details? so we're open for dinner Wednesday through Saturday, and uh, we do a cooking class on Tuesdays. We're on Frankfurt Avenue, um, right the split between Crescent Hill and Clifton. All right, easy to find, easy to do. Gina Stepo, everybody. Thank, Thank you. Thank you. Thank appreciate you. that. What an awesome time we've had today, Tim. Of course, I can't wait to get to At the Italian Table oh. to have a, one of those family-style meals where the family comes together. You can actually sit down and talk and enjoy the meal. Authentic Italian cuisine, and it's such a beautiful place. We love Chef Gina Stipo. So glad she's here. It has been awesome to have her on the show. We appreciate you watching. To our studio audience, thank you all for being here. If you're looking for tickets to the show, check them out at mintjuleptours.com. For Tim Laird, I'm Kevin Harned. On behalf of all of us at b, b Productions, we'll see you next time on Secrets of Bluegrass Chefs.